Good morning. This is Dr. Wael Gindi, ophthalmology consultant in the Giza Memorial Eye Institute. Today we're going to be discussing the relative after pupillary defect or what we call Marcus Gunn pupil. In order to understand the relative afferent pupillary defect, first we need to go through the uh, visual pathway and the uh, light reflex pathway. The visual pathway starts in the retina and then uh, the optic nerve and then passes uh, the chiasma and the optic uh, tract. From the optic tract uh, you relay in the, the lateral judiculate nucleus and from the uh, lateral judiculate nucleus uh, it comes out the optic radiation uh, which ends in the uh, visual cortex, occipital visual cortex. The light reflex uh, passes in the optic nerve uh, to the chiasma and then to the optic tract and then leaves the optic tract to go to the uh, pretectal nucleus in the posterior midbrain and the pretectal nucleus gives uh, bilaterally to the uh, uh, the main ocular oculomotor nuclei on both sides and then from the oculomotor nucleus the the uh, the fibers to the pupil goes uh, to uh, the ciliary ganglion and from the ciliary ganglion in the constrictive pupillae in the pupil and uh, and then you get the reflex for uh, pupillary constriction in both eyes in response to stimulation to one eye, any eye is stimulated, both eyes will be uh, responding to that stimulation. So as you can see, any lesion in front of the light reflex pathway will not affect the light reflex and any lesion that is behind the light reflex pathway will not affect the light reflex. And we will review the, some of the uh, lesion stations that can affect the pupil and cannot affect the pupil. The, the ones that can affect the vision but would not affect the, the, the pupil and we will revise all together right now. So uh, we will have an example, of our first example is the normal light reflex when you're swinging your flashlight between both eyes and you have no lesions in the visual pathway or the light the reflex pathway. So the pupils will be both constricted in response to the light and when you swing the flash from left to right you will see no movement in the pupils. The pupils both are constricted. You will see no dilatation or reconstriction because the pupils are constricted by the direct and the consensual in the same time. In order to have a relative afferent pupillary defect, you must have three things. You must have two pupils, left and right, so you can compare between them. You have to have intact efferent innervation for both pupils, and you have to have a defective afferent innervation, which means afferent pupillary defect in one eye. Now our first example is a lesion in the uh, left optic nerve. This lesion will give us a relative afferent pupillary defect on the left side. So when you swing your light to the left side, both pupils will dilate. When you swing it to the right side, both pupils will constrict. The direct light reflex on the right side is working along with the consensual but the left side, because it has an afferent pupillary effect, its consensual reflex on the right side is lost. So y when you swing it, the light to the right side, both pupils constrict. When you swing the light to the left side, both pupils dilate. Our second, our, or third example, actually, is uh, a lesion in the optic radiation. A lesion on the optic radiation, as we can see, is behind the light reflex uh, pathway. So you will have a normal light reflex, Swinging the flashlight on both sides will give you normal pupillary reflexes, no uh, movement, dilatation or uh, narrowing of the pupils will be seen, and you will have a fiction of vision and the visual field, but uh, you will have normal pupils. The next example we have is what we call a pretectal relative afferent pupillary defect. We have a, a lesion in the pretectal nucleus in the posterior uh, midbrain which will affect the, uh, uh, the pupillary reflex but will not affect the vision because it's away from the visual pathway. So you will get, in, in our example, you will get a right relative afferent, uh, sorry, a left relative afferent pupillary defect but uh, the vision will be normal. And as you can see, fl the flash on the right side gets a normal constriction of both eyes. The flash on the left side it gives you dilatation of both eyes. Now, 
what would you do if you have a dilated fixed pupil? If you have a dilated fixed pupil, then uh, this means either you have uh, an efferent defect, like in third nerve uh, palsy, or total posterior sinica, or whatever, a traumatic lesion. Uh, if you want to discriminate between uh, uh, this isolated lesion, or if this as a, a lesion is associated with vi visual pathway lesion, then you're going to have to do your swing, flash swing test and rely on uh, uh, other signs other than the direct relative afferent papillary defect that you know. If in this example we have a patient with left optic nerve lesion and a left third nerve palsy, if you swing the flash to the left side, both pupils are dilated. You will take it to the right side, the left pupil will not respond because it's dilated fixed because of the third nerve palsy, but the right eye will constrict. You go back to the left side, the right eye dilates. You go to the right side, the right eye constricts. So every time you swing the flash towards the left side, the right eye will dilate. And every time you swing it directly on the right side, it will constrict. And this is what we call reverse testing of the relative afferent pupillary defect. You can see that the right eye is responding to the direct uh, uh, light reflex, but it is not responding to a consensual from the left side which tells you that the left side has an afferent papillary defect. You have a normal uh, light pathway on the uh, right side, but you have an afferent papillary defect on the left side. Although the left side has a dilated fixed pupil, the right eye, with its reverse testing of the relative afferent papillary defect, gives you the clue. In this lesion, in this example, we have a lesion in the third nerve palsy isolated, it's not accompanied by uh, uh, an, an, uh, a visual pathway lesion or an optic nerve lesion. So when you do the uh, fl swinging flash, when it's directly on the right side, it constricts. And when you flash it on the left side, the left side has normal vision or normal visual pathway and light pathway. So the right pupil will remain constricted all the time with the direct light on the right side or a consequential reflex from the left side. And this summarizes all different uh, uh, varia variations of uh, situations that we've had uh, uh, with the Marcus gun. And uh, I hope uh, that this sum uh, yeah, gives you a little bit of an understanding about uh, how to test and how to identify lesions uh, with, uh, associated with the uh, Marcus gun uh, people. Thank you.